All right, let's turn to Ferguson, Missouri, where the National Guard ready to move in if chaos breaks out after grand jury decision comes down in the death of Michael Brown. We're expecting that decision pretty soon, aren't we, Dominic? Well, we are. The question is when. The grand jury is wrapping up, Richard, but law enforcement is greatly concerned. Worried about the violent past and with new intelligence coming in, the FBI has sent a bulletin to police across the country. It warns that violent individuals will likely try to exploit peaceful protest and attack law enforcement in Ferguson and possibly nationwide. According to the bulletin, suspects could be armed with knives and guns and tactical gear like tear gas masks and bulletproof vests. The warning cites specific recent intelligence that is causing concern, including threatening messages. November 9th, an unidentified black separatist group offered a $5,000 bounty for Officer Wilson's location on a social media site. Four days earlier, a Georgia police officer receives a pamphlet saying keep calm and kill cops, clearly referencing the Michael Brown shooting. There is also concern that hackers might conduct cyber attacks against police, posting their personal information and shutting down their computer networks. To sum it all up, Ferguson is facing a state of emergency. The National Guard is there and a new warning from the FBI. As I just said a minute ago, authorities are warning that something bad potentially, Richard, could happen. Absolutely. Uh, let's bring in also Mayo Bartlett now, attorney and former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit at the Westchester County DA's office. Um, I'll ask these guys the same thing, but when you have a high profile case, especially something like this, when they bring in the National Guard and they declare a state of emergency before the grand jury brings back, do you think that's a necessary precaution or are they ramping up fears here to the point where you're almost asking for trouble? I think they're ramping up fears and you could see that uh, and, and before the Trayvon Martin uh, uh, verdict came in, you know, you had the suggestion that you needed to have a strong police presence. Even in Westchester County, it was suggested that there was a call for calm, when in fact most people weren't going to do anything other than be calm to begin with. And uh, the best way to prevent all of this is to have dialogue and to have relationships with people in the community. You can't simply ignore people in the community and then after a high profile case, you know, and arises. And I've heard that too. Uh, but if they haven't done the legwork, and let's be fair, New York City has done a much better job in recent years about trying uh, on the preemptive side to have relationships so when something like this happens, at least they're not starting from scratch. But because that didn't exist in Ferguson, did they have a choice? I, I think you have a choice, and I think that this goes back to the militarization of the police and to call in the National Guard. I mean, the National Guard should be used for cases of emergency if you have widespread uh, disasters. But here, this, this is nothing, number one, that the police departments themselves couldn't handle because the majority of the people who have been protesting in Ferguson have done so peacefully. And in fact, it, it's almost a school of thought that says that the people who have not protested peacefully were allowed to do so by the police. For instance, when people were looting, the police sort of pulled back and allowed that. And that was to the detriment of everybody in the community. No one in the community, protesters or otherwise, want to see their, their stores burned down because at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, you don't mm. have a store. From your perspective as county exec, you got something going on. Can you do it yourself or do you need to turn when it's this kind of, this big, do you have to turn to the feds? I don't, I just don't think so. I, it seems to me that you know, my recollection is a lot of the folks who are causing trouble weren't from Ferguson. No, no. They came in. They came right. in from other places. Well, this weren't the, these weren't the shop holders, or the owners. Um, so you're not really dealing with that kind of situation. It seems to me that you, you inflame the emotions by saying we're going to bring in the National Guard. I don't, you know, what do you bring the National Guard in for? Uh, Kent State showed us we don't need National mm. Guard in situations. Okay. I mean, look, uh, anything this governor has decided has been bad. I mean, he has handled this publicly terrible from yeah. moment one. 
And, you know, I think that a perfect example recently was on Staten Island when, when Reverend Sharpton said, we're going to have a rally, we're going to march, and they originally were going to close down the bridge. They had conversations. They didn't do that. They had a very, very peaceful march in Staten Island. There's no reason with, that, with, with the right leadership that they could go mm -hmm. in, regardless of whatever the verdict turns out to be, that they could have had a peaceful march. But, but, As Mayo but, but, said, you've escalated now that we need, and remember how their reaction the last time you had this. Yep. But in defense uh, of the governor here, and I'm saying this with a 30 year track record. You have professional agitators that go around the country looking for peaceful protests. They go infiltrate the protests, and the next thing you know, you have a riot. That, this has happened quite a bit. That's and what, it happened in Missouri that, as well. That's why, if I was the governor of Missouri, I would call in a Jesse Jackson, I would call a Reverend Sharpton and say, I need you to take this over. There's going to be a protest. I want you to lead the protest because then they know it's not going to be the lunatics out there. That's what would happen. You know what I would do? I would even, before I even did that, I would start to cultivate relationships with the local leadership. Because when mm, people come in from the outside, you get a, an Al Sharpton or a Jesse Jackson, mm. and it's not a knock against either of them. It's not the same as if you have home cultivated leadership. And those people are there. But do you it's think just, do you hey, hey, do you just you because of the time thing, there's this perception that they're doing <coughs> this because they know the grand jury is going to come back without an indictment. Is that fair, or you don't know until they unseal it? You really don't know until it's unsealed because we don't know what the evidence was. And in this case, it's unique that you have a lot of evidence that would be set forth mm -hmm. that would be on the on the prosecution side. Uh, you have um, not just the ME, but you also have uh, a second set of eyes as an ME that's yeah. coming in from the family's perspective. And so by the time you get finished, you're going to get the full, mm. as close right. to the full story as you, as you can I'm expect. No, I know I'm already good. heavy. I asked the guys last night this, and I'll ask the panel tomorrow night. I know you got a big event tomorrow, but... Do you got a problem with how the prosecutor handled the grand jury? He laid both sides out instead of picking a side? I think a grand jury ought to be a search for the truth. It really should be. So it shouldn't be that you, you handpick and you, you take certain bits of information and you exclude others. You ought to really put it out there. If there's exculpatory information, that should be heard by a grand jury, whether it's a police officer or whether yeah. it's a member of, of, the, of general society. You should have a full and fair presentation to the grand jury. All right, stay with us. All right, and remember, everybody at home, weigh in yourself. Go to Facebook and Twitter and sound off. On our question here tonight, is the state of emergency in Ferguson and the activation of the National Guard prudent or an overreaction on the part of the governor? We'll be right back.